Mission Control, this is Eagle One. Do you copy? SR-71. Blackbird. The jet that outran the world. The ghost plane. Imagine a plane so fast that no missile has ever caught it. A jet that could cross a country before you finished a cup of coffee. The SR-71 Blackbird wasn't just an aircraft. It was a shadow, a ghost tearing across the edge of space. It became the most feared spy in the Cold War, a machine that rendered Soviet radar screens useless, turning their targets into helpless blips. But the real story? It's not just about speed. It's about paranoia, impossible engineering, and the men who flew a legend that shouldn't have existed. This is the story of the SR-71, the Cold War problem. The year is 1956. The Cold War is boiling. America needs eyes deep inside Soviet territory amongst missiles, bombers, nuclear silos. At first, the U-2 spy plane works, flying high, snapping photos, but radar is catching up. Missiles get sharper. Then in 1960, disaster. A U-2 piloted by Francis Gary Powers is shot down, captured alive. The U.S. was humiliated on the world stage. The message is clear, the Soviets can see everything. So the question lands on the table. Can we build a plane so untouchable it makes missiles useless? The bold solution. Skunk Works and Kelly Johnson enter a secret workshop buried inside Lockheed. They called it the Skunk Works. At the helm was Clarence Kelly Johnson. Genius, stubborn, unafraid of the impossible. He'd already built the U-2. Now he aimed to break physics itself. His idea, a jet that could cruise at 85,000 feet. Sprint at Mach 3.2, faster than a bullet. Made of titanium, light yet heat proof. Shaped to confuse radar decades before stealth was even a word. Titanium was so rare the US had to secretly buy it from the Soviet Union. And when the design rolled out, it looked less like a plane and more like a spaceship. Tests, challenges, and pilot stories. Building the Blackbird was one thing. Flying it was something else. On the ground, it leaked fuel constantly. Why? Because its panels only sealed tightly at Mach 3 when the heat expanded its skin. At top speed, the jet's surface glowed. 600 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to cook dinner on the wing. Pilots wore spacesuits. They didn't sit in a cockpit. They strapped into a furnace. And yet, they loved it. They tell stories of dodging Soviet missiles. Dozens fired at once. The moment they launched, one pilot recalled, we just pushed the throttle and outran them. No Blackbird was ever shot down, not once. The twist, flawed genius. But here's the twist. The same brilliance that made the SR-71 untouchable also made it unsustainable. Every mission was a ballet of refueling tankers. Without them, the Blackbird was useless. Maintenance was brutal. Engines had to be rebuilt constantly. And the cost? Astronomical. Each flight drained millions. Worse, like satellites were rising. Eyes in orbit that didn't need refueling, didn't need pilots, couldn't be shot down. The Blackbird wasn't defeated by enemy missiles. It was defeated by time. The legacy. The SR-71 officially retired in 1998. Some still whisper about secret successors hidden in black projects. But for many, the Blackbird was the pinnacle, proof that under pressure, human beings can make magic from metal. Its DNA is everywhere, in stealth bombers, in drones, in the quiet rumors of aircraft we haven't seen yet. Decades later, when you stand under its black wings in a museum, it doesn't look like history. It still looks like the future. Because the SR-71 wasn't just a spy plane, it was a message. A message that said, if you want to catch us, you'll have to outrun a shadow.